He, Arun and I started this conversation, uh, I don't remember now, many, many years ago, and there have been several efforts at trying to develop... 2005. 2005. Yes. <laughs> but uh, much water has passed and we have uh, tried uh, and tested several ways to develop an instrument that... Uh, is easy to use, is short, captures uh, uh, elementary information for both researchers and practitioners, and is uh, amenable to uh, deployment at large scale. Uh, this is the latest version of this effort that we are now uh, piloting. The idea is to test it in as many different contexts as possible and to at the same time build a community of uh, researchers and practitioners as part of the flare network and uh, i will ask uh, dan to provide a quick background on flare although many of you are already part of that network and, and uh, participate in it through conferences uh, today Based on uh, your submissions in response to our call for applications, uh, we want to provide information on what is expected during the testing and, and the pilot exercise for this. It is not a data collection exercise and uh, uh, it is important that expectations, what we expect you to do as participants in this testing is as clear as possible so that we can develop the tool and the instrument, which then you will be able to use for purposes uh, that can be as varied as uh, the participants themselves and the contexts in which this will be used. The objective is simple, I will repeat, to develop a tool that can capture data necessary for use in a wide diversity of contexts and that can be deployed at scale easily by a range of actors ranging from practitioners and researchers, students, NGOs, uh, communities themselves and so on. Uh, before I get into the, uh, the pilot itself, I uh, want to invite uh, first, Arun, to give us a, a background and the context. Where, where we are is not random. There is a history to how we got here. And then ask uh, Dan to provide a, a similar context to Flair and how uh, we believe this uh, exercise will contribute to and build upon the, the activities of the Flair network itself. So Arun, would you like to uh, provide us with a background on where we are and how we got here? Well, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm very happy to do so. Thank you, Ashwini, and uh, really glad, great to see so many people uh, joining us this morning. Uh, we are very excited about this initiative. And as Ashwini said, it's something that we have been thinking about for a long time. And uh, almost ready to launch it, even maybe three or four years ago, but one thing or the other just kept us from moving forward. So what, uh, so Ashwini, you asked me to talk about the background and history of this effort. So, you know, the, 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 the uh, app or the uh, set of questions that we have developed for understanding community forestry or community forest governance more effectively in different parts of the world is, builds on the International Forestry Research and Institutions Program, which many of you also know, uh, just like many of you also know FLAIR, which is the foundation of the platform on which we are uh, creating or through which we are launching this, this uh, 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 pilot initiative for robust data collection analysis and data sharing with like-minded partners, like-minded collaborators around the world. The IFLI program was founded in 1992 by Eleanor Ostrom and many of her colleagues at uh, Indiana University. And uh, I was among them. 
but there were many other uh, people also who worked on the development of the IFRI questionnaires. And that process lasted for nearly a decade. I became a part of IFRI that in the sense of uh, coordinating the management and uh, uh, activities that IFRI was undertaking in 2005 uh, slash six, which is also the time around which Ashwini and I started working fairly intensively on uh, community forests, forest commons, and how better to understand what happens in forest commons using different sources and different kinds of data. And this initiative is an effort to both use the advantages of the IFRI instruments, which covered information on nearly 1,500, 1,600 variables, and really created for any given context or any given site or location, a very thorough picture of what was going on in community forests in that location. The very comprehensiveness of those instruments was also, uh, uh, was also in some sense, it was also a drawback because it clearly interfered with the objective of using and working with IFRI instruments and using IFRI data in sites around the world. So we began to think about what are the most important IFRI variables based on the previous 15, 16 years of data collection and which we can conveniently summarize in a much smaller set and which can be administered and used by researchers, by practitioners, by people, even in communities themselves uh, without much difficulty or without too much room for misinterpretation. And so what you are participating today, participating in today and what we are hoping to advance further is the result of all of that work that we carried out first uh, uh, with the IFRI instruments and then trying to identify a much smaller set of key variables that provide a, a clear sense a useful sense of how forest commons uh, work. So Ashwini, with that, I'm going to hand it back to you just to just so that you can continue, uh, you and Dan can continue with what, uh, what we want to do in this uh, session. Thank you. Thanks, Arun. Uh, this effort now uh, has merged with Flair and uh, going forward, we want to uh, make sure that it does not remain a research effort, but is also uh, used by and is useful to practitioners, both working directly with communities, but also on forest livelihoods more generally. Uh, Dan, if you are around, could you provide us with a, a, a quick uh, background and update on Flare? Sure. Thank you, Ashwini, and thank you, Arun. And Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Uh, so I'm Dan Miller, and I'm the relatively new coordinator for the FLARE network, which of course, uh, I think as, as many, if not all of you would know, was founded by Arun Agarwal. Um, and I'll just say that we, we talk about FLARE, I think many of you are here not only because of IFRI, but also uh, through your connection in the past and now to the FLARE network. Uh, the Flare Network was launched in 2015, uh, just at the time of the Paris Climate Accords. And as a reminder, Flare stands for Forest and Livelihoods Assessment, Research, and Engagement. So assessment, research, and engagement are sort of the three watchwords for Flare. And our mission is to advance knowledge at the intersection of forest and livelihoods, and then the reason why we're partnering with IFRI in this particular case uh, is that we want to facilitate the application of this knowledge to policy and practice. So a big, big part of what FLAIR is all about. Um, and our overall vision is to create and nurture a vibrant global community of practice to understand, to imagine, and to help bring about more just and sustainable futures for people and forests. And we're so glad to uh, see so many of you here that are committed to that broader vision. 
And I think the last thing that I'll say is um, we are one of the key vehicles through which we try to realize our uh, mission is the annual meeting of the of the FLAIR uh, community. And we're meeting in Rome in October, as many of you may know, and we're planning a follow-up workshop to the piloting of the Come For tool uh, that we're learning so much about today. So all are invited uh, to Rome. Um, I think many of you have submitted abstracts and, and may have heard back from us already. Happy to be in touch separately and look forward to the discussion now. Thanks to Ashwini and Arun. Thanks, Dan. Uh, that is where the, the uh, future activities will be uh, directed at and coordinated. As Dan said, we plan to bring together uh, lessons from the the pilot exercise over the next two months and discuss these at a workshop in Rome. Uh, and there will be uh, hopefully several other people also present who can bring their experience to bear on uh, further it. And that is where we will have, a let's say, a version that is that incorporates all the challenges that data collection in the field always entails. We will hopefully at least face all those challenges to the, to the extent possible, address them and incorporate them into a new version, which will then uh, be released for more wider adoption and uh, execution. So uh, I will now go on to what our plan is. And this is where uh, uh, what we expect from people who will pilot the effort uh, will also come from. The uh, application has uh, three parts. One is data capture, and that is the most straightforward. There is a set of questions. I uh, sent you a PDF of the questions. This is a draft that will be incorporated uh, during the pilot. The second part is information and data that is available from secondary sources, particularly satellite products. Uh, so we are going to ask you to prepare and submit a polygon of the forest for which data will be collected. And the application that we are developing will automatically extract data from multiple satellite products that range from uh, night lights data, climate data, uh, even uh, uh, measures of uh, uh, forest condition and extent, forest cover and so on, over time to the extent possible, that will be automatically updated based on the information provided in the polygon. So that is one part of it. This is data that you will not have to collect, but will be provided to you or whoever uh, uh, collects the data and helps users combine the data that is collected in the field with data that is readily available, but is not possible to collect in the field, particularly satellite data. The, the second part is data collection itself, which is the set of questions that uh, I sent you. This is a set of questions like Arun said, we have derived from 30 years of uh, free data instruments, its evolution and uh, collection in the field over more than 700 sites uh, in uh, more than 20, more than 25 countries over the last 30 years. The lessons and insights from that experience allows us to pick the, the variables that have proven to be most useful, most important, and most practical in diverse settings around the world. Now, this still includes a lot of questions and uh, we would like the testing to also make sure that our assessment that these are the right questions and these are the questions that are most uh, useful, most insightful, and most practical bears out in the actual testing rather than uh, depending on our judgment uh, from experience. 
Uh, the third part, which is uh, where Flair uh, is the anchor and uh, uh, the platform, is a discussion forum where, at least at the pilot stage, people who are collecting the data and engaging with the uh, uh, communities directly will be able to exchange notes on what the variables mean, what are the challenges that uh, need to be addressed and overcome uh, in a field setting, and to engage in peer learning so that one can develop a sense of how to use a particular application, in this case, uh, uh, the questions and the data that is being collected in ways that feeds into further development of this application over the next few months. There will be a training. This is today is not the training. Today is just an information session on what we want to do. These three aspects, the, uh, the construction and submission of a polygon for the forest for which you want to collect data so that we can extract secondary data and uh, make it available to you in the field. To second, to collect data on the questions that we have shared with you. And third, to share your data collection experience in terms of the challenges that you face and the ways in which you address them so that we build a, a peer group that participates in building this instrument, making it more useful, more insightful, and more practical over the next three months. Uh, we actually have less than three months. And that is uh, where I now want to emphasize. The first uh, thing to remember is this is a pilot exercise. We want to test the questions and the application in as diverse contexts as possible. Therefore, collecting data on multiple sites in the same place is not something that we want to encourage. The idea is if you have a site that is representative of what is present in a, in a landscape or in a region, then collecting data in that one site will give us enough insights on whether the application is useful or not for the challenges that are specific to that context. Collecting data on one more site or four more sites is not going to add a, a lot of value for the testing of the application. The second is, and uh, it's something that is very elemental to IFRI, answer to the question, what is a forest? And especially what is a community forest? And I will break that down. For our purposes, for data collection, we define a forest as a demarcated entity that is at least five hectares and used by at least five, uh, uh, five households, or I think it is three, but I mean, there's at least some collective element to it. It is not a private forest used only by one individual. Uh, even if uh, uh, it is private forest used by many households, it still constitutes a forest for our purposes. It has to be used by many people, many households that creates the element of collective action that is most important for community forestry. So our forest is very simple. A demarcated area with, to the extent possible, clear boundaries used in common by at least five households. In this context, it is important to point out that forests that are several thousand hectares is perhaps not a very meaningful description, especially if the population that is using it is also in several thousands. From an IFRI and FLARE point of view, this is not a forest. This is a forest landscape. And it is important to think about it as need to break it down into what is one forest and the second forest and the third forest and so on. The second part of this element is community. What is a community forest? And I could not uh, 
emphasize this more, community forest for us does not mean a forest that is owned by the community. It is a forest that is used in common by a community, whether it is owned by a government, by a temple, by a, a company, it doesn't matter. The operational term here is forest commons. If it is subject to the tragedy of the commons where multiple people are using it, if it is amenable to collective action for forest improvement, where one household alone cannot make sure that the forest uh, is managed, where multiple households need to coordinate their activities, either through a formal institution or not. For us, any forest that is used in common is a community forest. Some of these may be owned by communities. Some of these may be owned by governments, but managed by communities through a formal uh, institution such as joint forest management in India or uh, other similar initiatives, or in several cases, it may just be managed informally by a community. As long as there are some rules that restrict access to how the forest is used, that clearly demarcate what, when, where, how much of the forest can be used, we consider that forest a community forest. So I will repeat these two. One, a forest is a demarcated area that is used in common by at least five households and at least five hectares in, in area. And the demarcated part is important. And the second is a community forest is anything that is a forest that is used in common by multiple households that prevents one household from taking unilateral action without coordinating with or consulting other households constitutes a community forest. What we would like to do is ensure that the pilot exercise is carried out in a forest that meets this definition and this description. Uh, we felt the need for this information session because it was uh, clear to us in some cases that uh, uh, some of you did not fully appreciate these definitions and we apologize for not being very clear in our call for applications. And also the ambition that was clearly reflected in, in many of the submissions which included uh, a large number of sites in, a, in an area. So from a pilot perspective, we would urge you to participate in the exercise to test the application in one site that is representative of an area rather than many sites in the same area using a, a significant amount of resources. We don't want to prevent you from using the application to collect uh, more information, but from the pilot experiment and testing perspective, one site in an area is what we would like. If you have the ability and the motivation to collect data in two sites or three sites, we would want to make sure that these sites are different from each other in context and in the ways in which communities engage with the forest. We are developing an uh, Android-based application, and uh, uh, we will organize training to those uh, who sign up for the pilot and uh, are selected based on uh, their submissions. Uh, there will be uh, support that will be provided, uh, certainly on a day-to-day -day basis, although may not be possible given the multiple time zones, may not be possible to do it uh, in real time or an hour to hour basis. Uh, Abhijit Parmar and uh, Apurva Dudu uh, who are on the call with us will be responsible for coordinating with you and providing support in um, as quick a turnaround time as possible. Uh, Christy Watkins uh, also on this call will be coordinating this effort and uh, we will make sure that periodically we will hold 
these kind of sessions to collect feedback that is obviously not possible to collect only through the app. Even though there is a discussion forum built into the app for peer learning and for troubleshooting, the larger feedback that relates to the, the, the ambition of the application to make uh, data collection easier for variables that are uh, useful, insightful, and practical may only be possible through uh, these kind of sessions uh, that allow feedback beyond specific questions and specific challenges. So we will organize that uh, on a continuous basis after the initial training. And uh, we hope to conduct the actual testing of the application uh, uh, starting in late July and ending in late September so that we can collate all the lessons and the information in order to present it at the workshop in Rome and uh, uh, move forward towards the release of uh, the next version of the application that can be used by anyone uh, with training and with uh, similar kinds of support. Uh, I want to end this here. I want to emphasize that uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, an application that is of uh, great uh, attraction to a lot of uh, agencies, both government and uh, uh, non-government, international NGOs, uh, donor agencies, uh, global efforts like uh, the Bond Challenge, and of course, national efforts of governments all require communities to participate in meaningful ways, but have not yet been able to design systems that allow communities to control the data that they collect. And of course, also control, uh, also access uh, data that lies beyond what the communities can collect, such as from satellite products. Uh, it will be, I believe, a path breaker, a trailblazer, for what is expected from communities in, in terms of their contributions to forest landscape restoration over the next 10 years. And uh, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, how, how excited and grateful I am to have such a great diversity of uh, people from different contexts, but also from years and years of experience that, uh, that you are willing to participate and collaborate in this exercise over the next two months. And then I sincerely hope that uh, uh, you will be happy with the outcome of this uh, collective process and will use the application that comes out of it in October in your own contexts to, to great uh, effort and impact. I'll stop here. Uh, I'll see if uh, Arun and Dan uh, want to add anything. And then uh, we do have time for a few questions for, for today. Dan, do you want to uh, say anything more? No, I just, uh, only that I'm inspired uh, to see so many people from so many different places on this call. It's wonderful to see. Yeah, maybe there's just one or two things that I would like to add. One is that as, as Ashwini and uh, Dan have said, I'm also very excited about uh, how many of us from how many different countries and places are interested in this effort. And it's a uh, testimony to the power of the idea of commons and to our own diverse ways of engaging with that idea. Uh, but not only am I excited about what this large group of us assembled here together on Zoom uh, signals for the future, but also by the possibility that this is only the first step in the much even larger community that we will create, and that we will uh, where we would where we hope to work together. And the second thing I'd say is that, that uh, we want everyone to, who's participating in it to think of this as one aspect of an open science initiative where the data we collect and the activity we undertake uh, work for the benefit of all of us. Uh, 
Ashwini already outlined how some of the already available publicly accessible data set will be incorporated in the app, in the data collection evidence gathering effort so that your sense of your own uh, places with, with which you're familiar is further enhanced. But I also think it would be incredible for us to work together on future analyses and uh, 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 yeah, uh, inference making lesson drawing from the work that we are doing together collectively. Uh, there are there are papers in physics that have a thousand authors. And while we are not quite there yet, I would love to see a research output that includes all of us as co-authors. So thank you again very much for coming. And uh, Ashwini, back to you for uh, uh, coordinating and taking any questions that may come up. And again, I will also uh, add one more thing. One quick thing, please feel free to, don't, don't need to raise your hand and ask questions. Just feel free to write your question in the chat and send it to everybody. And we can then uh, both review the questions that are coming in. Uh, and also, if somebody raises their hand, we can also call on them uh, as, we, as we hear your questions. Thank you. Sorry, go ahead, Ashwini. That's exactly what I was going to say. Let's use the chat function so that even if we run out of time, we at least have all the questions. And then we can, of course, continue uh, this engagement uh, on email and, and beyond and so on. But uh, I'm sure there, there are questions. This is a session for clarification. So please, please let us know. Uh, can I ask? Uh, yes, Tapan, please go ahead. Uh, so thanks uh, for inviting us as well as uh, very uh, pleased to see all of you here. So I have a few confusion uh, in the questions. Uh, first one is, uh, what should be the approach of data collection? Is it uh, through some focus group discussion or some key informants interviews or household interviews? Uh, this is one question. And then I have a confusion with uh, some uh, terms here. For example, here uh, we can see settlements. So settlements uh, in different context uh, probably it means uh, different uh, 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 different things. For example, in my study site that I proposed, we have uh, four villages surrounding the forest. So probably uh, by settlement here, we can uh, understand each village probably. And then uh, about the biodiversity, here we have some questions, list of tree species, uh, mammals and other animals they are uses, uh, but I, I'm not sure how we can collect this information. Is it uh, through uh, interviews or uh, we need to do any other service? And I have some confusions on other questions. Uh, for example, 24 question, number of uh, literate individuals. So uh, literacy in different contexts is different. So, Tapan, Tapan, may I, may I intervene? So, yeah, these please. are all questions. These are all questions that will be addressed during training. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. How to collect? So, what does settlement mean? How is biodiversity? Number of tree okay. species, etc., uh, etc. Et so, we will conduct a training to okay, enable you good. to. And each of these questions will have an explanation. There will be a manual and so on. We are preparing that. And okay, so that's good. That's we good. will. We will get there, but okay. I think the uh, the important part, and thank you for bringing this up, uh, the important part that I missed, and uh, all of us missed, is that the, the testing uh, is actually designed for, or we expect uh, for people who are already working in a particular village or forest for some time. So they are already aware of what is going on there and that this data is supposed to capture what you already know with some maybe one or two visits. Yeah. <laughs> and that is what we see in the, uh, the pool of applicants and the people who are present here is that all of you are people who are already working in some site somewhere for many years. So from a test and pilot point of view, 
it is best to go or think about a site and pick a site where half the questions you can fill without even going there because you know the site so well. <laughs> yeah, that's and true. And then for true. validation, for so there are many other uh, uh, layers to this, and uh, as part of testing, uh, we can avoid. But of course, the data ultimately should be verified with the community one way or the other. So it's always a good idea to go to the community and not do it completely. I mean, I have yeah. worked some communities. I can fill this data without going anywhere. But I feel it is my responsibility to go to that community after I have filled it at least once as a matter of principle and practice. And certainly in the future, we will go to communities where we have not visited. But for testing purposes, we want to uh, uh, request you to pick sites that you are already familiar with so that a lot of effort is not required and the testing can go on. We can. Yeah. Test whether these questions are, and because you are the experts on that side, you can read this question and not just answer it, but also think about whether this is the right question. That is what you can contribute. We can design questions, but it can always be improved and they can be changed in ways that make it more applicable in more wider contexts. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Point. Thanks. So let's go. So there are some in the chat. I will ask uh, Apurva to keep keep an eye on the chat, and then we'll go to her to ask uh, her to recap. But uh, there's Ligrand, Ida, and Sajak. So let's go with these three first. We will take all the questions together and then uh, respond at the same time. So Ligrand. Yes, uh, I have just uh, a small question about uh, the outcome of those uh, uh, results. Uh, the collected result, I want to know if they will, they will be published or uh, what will be uh, the outcome of those results. So if they will be published, uh, collectors will, uh, uh, will figure as uh, authors or uh, I don't know, that, that's uh, my question. Thank you. Okay. So let's take the questions and then uh, I will try to address all of them together. Ida? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, my questions are about the data ownership and uh, I won't talk about um, open science. So even if we participate in this test piloting aspect with one or two sites, how are we going about the data that we call it do we have any obligations about using the data or any limitation on sharing it? What, what are the, the, I mean, the thinking about that? So I understand that we can do one or two sites for the pilot and then use the tool after it is refined to collect more data and then use it in a research setting. I'm a researcher and what we want to do is to, for research. So what, but what can we do with the two sites that we will be test piloting? Okay, Sajat. Hello everyone, thank you so much. It's my great pleasure to be here. And dear uh, colleague, I have a question about uh, the questionnaire. Uh, can I ask you, uh, this question uh, will be edited before collecting data? or this questionnaire is final? Uh, uh, nothing is final, uh -huh. but, and if you have suggestions, we would certainly okay. welcome uh, okay. uh, all that you can contribute. Okay. Uh, but the idea of the test is to collect exactly these kind of feedback so that then we can incorporate it as we go. Mm -hmm. uh, and dear um, Ashwini, as you know, uh, if we want to collect data based on the FAO uh, definition, we have uh, private and uh, public ownership in most of countries and uh, community co uh, ownership and or government ownership is a uh, subsection of private ownership, as you know, in the FAO definition, okay? And uh, another uh, questions uh, like uh, seven and uh, eight, 
how uh, a little sajad 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 we don't want to talk here about specific questions uh -huh. Uh -huh. and their meaning because they will, okay. we are developing a manual there will be a training and there is going to be time to provide feedback on whether it is useful or not how to make it better etc mm -hmm. today we just want to make sure as an information session what is it that we expect what okay. is it that okay. we plan to do and what is it that we expect from participants in the pilot so very good thank you thank you so much and i got all your information and all your explanation and thank you so much and i hope we can collect better data for testing the application thank you great benjamin <clears throat> thank you um yeah i wrote my question in the chat as well uh, my question simply if we wanted to uh, pilot the tool in a separate site a second site uh, and we created a polygon and sent it to uh, to you. Would you also process that and give us back the the satellite data for that second site, or does that become a burden for everyone in this pilot phase? Okay, so hold that thought. Uh, I don't think it will matter a big deal for a few sites here and there, but we will get to the. There are a set of data questions about both. Collecting additional sites, who owns the data, et cetera. And we will get to that. And I think that is exactly uh, what Arun wants to respond. Uh, 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 no, actually, I would, did not make your people's minds. Part of the reason for also organizing this information session, in addition to meeting all of you. Uh, in person, so to speak, uh, not quite in person, uh, was also to give you a sense of what we said in the announcement in terms of your involvement and our ability to support what you are doing. So we received a very large number of uh, responses uh, uh, and applications to be a part of this effort, which simultaneously uh, made us uh, excited and happy, but also scared us because you know, we had not anticipated uh, this many uh, responses. So here we here we only have about half of the people who uh, sent in sent in a proposal, uh, but we hope that we can uh, involve everyone. And what what we wanted to therefore to do was one to indicate to you that the scale of data collection for this pilot testing phase was not huge. And secondly, to say that we want to include as many people as possible in this effort. So what we decided was a very simple heuristic, which is to ask everyone to collect data on one or two or three locations, depending on how diverse they are. If you are working in an area that has different types of forests, different kind of user groups, different arrangements for using benefits or using products from forests. And they, at a single site, will not represent the diversity of contexts in which you're working. Uh, maybe you can do two sites or maybe even three sites. But to restrict the number, to cap the number of sites that anybody does at three, and then to maximize participation for those who are selected to be involved in this, to offer uh, $250 per site based on the number of sites that you are doing. And even for those who, who we thought we couldn't uh, involve in this effort to offer some uh, 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 benefits from participating in, in this effort. So you know, I and Dan will send out a uh, note very soon after this meeting to everybody whose proposals have been selected. And then a second note to everyone whose proposals we could not include at this time, but also extending uh, the possibility of engaging in this effort so that we can build a greater community and think about how best we can support those whose proposals were, or those applications are also uh, not selected. One thought we are uh, pursuing is whether we want to just pay to everybody who's not selected, still to pay everybody $250 for carrying out uh, data collection in one site. But we want to maximize and 
uh, participation and be as inclusive as possible. And that, as you can imagine, has some implications for how much we can offer to any single individual, uh, just given the scale of our resources and the uh, breadth of expressions of interest in this uh, initiative. So Ashini, that is what I wanted to say. Okay. Uh, but you can go back to the questions about data, et cetera, that uh, a number of people are posing. Okay, so uh, before we so go to Priscilla. Let's also see there's a hand from Priscilla if you want to call on her before uh, before going to answering questions. Priscilla, do you have a question about uh, data ownership and authorship? Because I would address that and then come to you if it is not. Okay. Bhagwan, do you have a question about uh, data ownership and authorship? You are muted. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, you, you, you are, yes, okay. Uh, Hello. Okay. I, okay, I read this question. Yes. Right? And Priscilla. I that... Priscilla, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Arun. Priscilla, yes. please go ahead. Bhagwan, you will be next. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, yes, I want to say my question, I have two questions. The first question is about the participants. Are we going to have more than one participant from, a, from each country or just one per country? And then the second part of my, uh, my question is about uh, the situation of Cameroon. Because in Cameroon, we have five agroecological zones. I already put on the chat board. And uh, each agroecological agro zone is really unique. So I wanted to find out if there is a possibility to collect data from all these five agroecological zones, which have different forest types. Oh, we have from the we move from Sahel to a low and high savanna to humid forest area. So I don't know. I wanted to when you throw it out, so you can think about it. Thank you. Okay, we'll I will address that. So Bhagwan, why don't you ask your question and then I will uh, respond to all. Okay. Uh, I read this question. I I got so that's the country uh, related question is not included here. Just like I am uh, belonging from Nepal, I am doing research in Nepal, and I got that uh, there is younger uh, federal system. So there is conflict between the provenance and the uh, federal government, and similarly in the local government and the provenance government. So this type of question is not uh, included here. So I want to be... So Mr. Bhagwan, if, if you have suggestions on what can be changed, edited, or added to the questionnaire, please send it to us. Okay. But the questionnaire will be part of the training in terms of what each question means and how how should we th think about it. And there will be a manual and there will be a discussion forum during the uh, data collection exercise for feedback and, and response. Okay, so uh, I'll start with Priscilla first. Uh, Priscilla, uh, I do not want you and by implication everyone to bear the burden of representing Cameroon in this exercise. There are, if, the, if we went by uh, all the agroecological zones, uh, even just in sub-Saharan Africa, we will never be able to do this exercise. So the idea is not to cover everything. The idea is for, if you are interested in something like this, pick one site that you know about and feel comfortable about, that you have engaged with and worked in for many years, and test the application. Once the application is ready and tested and there is a new version that incorporates all the suggestions and feedback and changes, then one can think about a project that covers all five agroecological zones of Cameroon. But this is not the time to do that. See? Uh, about data, ownership, authorship, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> So three days. First, we still, uh, so this data is being collected as part of a pilot exercise. We do not have uh, IRB approval for using this data for research purposes. Uh, if we want to use this data for uh, analysis and then publication, 
it will have to be approved by an uh, uh, ethics review committee, either at Michigan or Notre Dame at ISB. That process has not even started yet. And if that process is started, and we are hopeful that we will be able to talk this through and figure out a way to do that, every individual who is collecting data will also have to get ethics certificates for that data to be used in analysis and publication. We want to be very, very respectful of uh, sort of uh, ethics of uh, research with human subjects, especially when it uh, comes to communities that live in or near forests in uh, developing countries. Unless we cross that road, we don't know, and we will not know for some time whether this data can indeed even be used for a research paper. And if we cross that bridge, each one of you who wants the data to be included will have to uh, submit ethics certification. We will facilitate that. We are figuring that out because that has cost implications as well, that each participant receives uh, training in uh, human subjects research and a certificate that they are trained in it and allow the data to be used. But we are not there yet. If we go there and if we, uh, and anyway, the, the data that you collect belongs to you. It doesn't belong to us. This is a pilot. We are only going to use it to improve the application. The data you collect belongs to you. You can use it whichever way you want. We will return it to you if in any format that you wish. It will be in your uh, device in which it is collected. It will not be taken away. And if you cannot access it, because of some technical reasons, we will provide that data to you. So all the data that you collect and all the secondary data that is associated with it, which we will collect from satellite products, we will make it available to you at no cost or as, as part of this agreement and arrangement. What you do with that data is your responsibility and we urge you to consider uh, receiving training and certification and uh, research on human subjects before we you, you use the data in a publication. If we, if, you, if we get IRB approval, if you get certification and allow the use of the data that you collect in analysis and publication, authorship will also be discussed at a later stage. But what I believe is uh, mere data collection does not qualify anyone as an author. You have to contribute to the, the analysis, the inferences, the insights, and the writing, at least in some form, that is beyond data collection. So the authorship decision will come later. We want to be as inclusive as possible. As Arun said, physics journals have uh, published articles with a thousand or more uh, authors, co-authors. We would like to have a journal article with uh, 70 co-authors, all of you as uh, part of that process, but it has to be more systematic and it has to go beyond just, I collected data in one site. Okay, Apurva, do you have uh, any questions that you think from the chat uh, should be shared, answered? Yeah, there are two questions I think that have not been answered. First is on the meaning of different context. Is it socioeconomic, spatial? The second is with respect to the site selection when the forest size is bigger. Okay. The, so, yeah. uh, you have, are you finished? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Different contexts requires differences on multiple dimensions, not just one or two. This is this caste and that is that caste. This is single tribe. This is multi-tribe. Those are not sort of different contexts in many ways. They are small differences and they are important differences. But from a testing point of view, we want two sites to be different on multiple dimensions. Both uh, spatial, ecological, as well as uh, social and economic. Uh, 
ultimately it will be your judgment but i want you to think about how to best contribute because you will be collecting data on two sites to make it most useful for the test these two sites need to be as different as possible from each other they cannot be just slightly different on one dimension we will have to do this uh, and we will of course trust your judgment uh, ultimately but our selection will depend on how different uh, two sites are on size uh, this is something uh, i don't have an answer to because what is a big forest uh, in the context where i am working in uh, peninsular india a uh, 500 hectare forest is a big forest for a community to use because that we don't have a lot of land we have a lot of people in india in the bolivian amazon 30000 hectares is uh, not a big forest again we have to develop a tool that will work anywhere in the world so if you have a site that meets our description but is very large that actually adds to the diversity it allows us to test the application in that situation even if it is not very common across the world again it will have to be uh, your judgment based on what the application wants to do in the future because this is a test and what your site can contribute ms devu okay thank you very much for your explanation and uh, i do have uh, one question uh, for example if the on the management aspect of the forest uh, the, the the you have mentioned on the uh, question about the uh, uh, community private management community management formal and the community management the formal government management and the so on If, if the forests are uh, uh, registered by unesco and uh, also managed by uh, different organizations that means uh, maybe ngos uh, government and also the community for example uh, there are some forests in ethiopia that have uh, been registered by unesco and uh, uh, they they, are, they they do have different parties for example uh, you muted yourself so such as core zones transition zones and also buffer zones therefore such forests what can we say such forests is where the category uh, of the such forests will be uh, registered and that means uh, it is confusing uh, to uh, really to mention in one of the uh, listed uh, the parameters of the management aspect is that is my question thank you uh these are exactly the questions that we will cover in the training sessions and in the manual but it's very useful if you can send us exactly how you think the categories do not fit your forest the problem is and i hope you appreciate it there is no clear taxonomy that will allow every forest in the world to fit neatly into five classes or seven classes we can go on increasing the number of classes but then uh, our traction becomes less and less so there will always be forests that are difficult to classify in one or the other category and we have to sort of meet that challenge we have to design a taxonomy and a classification that works for most but i am also aware that we will not be able to design a taxonomy that works for all it will be useful to know where does the taxonomy and the classification break down we will cover it during the training session but it will be even more useful if you can send us the description of your forest and why you think it does not fit into any one of the categories that are already listed and we will cover it during the training and we will include it in the manual as description
So just a couple of uh, things from my side, if you don't mind. Uh, it, it seems yeah. that there's a couple of questions about timing. And uh, just to confirm, we're aiming to have the pilots completed uh, well before the, or at least before the uh, Flare Rome meeting, which is starting on October 7th. So the timing for this would be between now and October 7th, we expect to get back to those who applied uh, with a decision about funding and information about further participation, I would say within the next couple of days. Uh, and then we will organize a training that will answer a number of the questions of the type that have started to be asked here. Uh, and that training will include several different modules that will be recorded and available uh, asynchronously to you to watch. Uh, we'll also have technical support uh, for follow-up questions that are not, you know, you don't feel like you understand them adequately through the training. And so that training will also be available uh, relatively soon. It will, it will take at least, um, I would say, at least a couple of weeks, you know, within the next month, I would say, is probably the timing. And Ashwini and Arun, you can correct me. Uh, but someone had asked yeah. about the timing. And so, you know, after the training, you, you obviously have had access to a draft version of the of the the questions that are that are asked in the app. Uh, so you can familiarize yourself with that. We have the training and then there'll be uh, at least a couple of months to do the pilot. And then we expect to have perhaps more than one, uh, but at least one workshop to share experiences online. Um, and maybe we do it by time zones or something like that. Um, but a, a set of opportunities for those who pilot the tool to provide feedback in a setting like this. And then again, when we gather in Rome, those who are able to make it. So that's a sense of the, the general timing. Um, I don't know, uh, Ashwini, Arun, Christy, others, if you want to clarify any of what I've said. And then the other question that I think wasn't quite answered yet that I saw was uh, from Ben about the availability of the data that IFRI has collected or has available from public sources about the site. Uh, is that available to participants? At least that's how I understood his uh, question. So Ashwini, Arun, um, comments, clarifications? So all data will be available. If you enter a site, the secondary data that we will collect will be made available to you. The data belongs to you and we will make it available. And uh, uh, of course, uh, Ben's question was about additional sites. And as of now, I, I don't think that should be a problem unless you go into sort of dozens of new sites. Uh, even then, uh, I'm sure we can uh, figure this out. That should not be a problem. The, the, I, and I just want to pick a couple of uh, chat entries that I see here. Uh, we will come back to you so that after this clarification and information session, you are able to amend your applications with better, more precise and uh, more practical information from which then uh, we can design the follow-up and training and so on. Uh, the second, so yes, applications to focus on smaller, smaller forest polygons, yes. Uh, and also uh, for Maureen, uh, 500 hectares is, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry if I gave you that impression, but five, there are plenty of forests even here that communities use and manage uh, 500 hectares uh, large, and that is not a landscape. When I say landscape, it is thousands of hectares. So I was referring particularly to those forests, very large forests. Uh, so just because they are public forests doesn't mean that they are not, uh, they, they completely fit our category where the government owns it, but the communities use it in common and either design rules to uh, control, restrict and regulate access or collectively act to improve the forest or prevent it from uh, degrading and so on. That is 
our definition of uh, uh, a forest for the purpose of this pilot. Uh, yeah, please don't resend the application. We will we will come back to you uh, with more information and a request and a recording yeah. of this section. Yeah, so I I think Ashwini, we should draw to a close. It's uh, almost ten minutes yeah. after the hour, and yeah. uh, uh, ideally we should not go over time. Uh, but I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to come to this information session and uh, to assure you that we will be in touch with you within the next couple of days with next steps and also be sharing with you a training uh, program roughly two and a half to three hours which will be entirely online and completing which will give you a very good sense of the app and what we are expecting uh, in the data collection and the primary thing I want to say about what we are expecting is not a lot of original, extensive, in-depth field work necessarily at this stage. Ashwini, uh, now uh, you want to draw well, to close? Then you get the final word. Thank you. That's the final word. We will be in touch with you very soon. Very soon. It's, it's heartening to see so many people on the call, and we very much look forward to uh, working with you and being in touch soon. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. See you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye bye.